How's it going guys? Today we're going to be going over another lead code question. Today our question is called coin change and this is a question that's being asked by Amazon right now. Alright guys, so today we're going over a problem called coin change. Again, it's a question that's being asked by Amazon and our problem description says you are given coins of different denominations in a total amount of money called amount. Write a function to compute the fewest number of coins that you need to make up that amount. If the amount of money cannot be made up by any combinations of the coins, return negative one. Okay, so we're given some sort of amount of money that we need to make up using a different, uh, different denominations of coins, right? And we, we're just basically asking, okay, if we're given this amount in these coins, what is the fewest number of coins that we can use to make up that amount successfully? So, and also as a note here, it just tells us quickly that you may assume that you have an infinite number of each of these coins. So we have an infinite number of coins, some amount, and we're asking, hey, can we make up this amount, one, with the coins that we're given? And two, if we can, what's the fewest number of coins that we can use to do that? Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now let's run through these two examples. So we're given coins one, two, and five. So denominations of coins that represent one, two, and five in amount 11. What's the fewest number of coins that we need to actually make up this amount? We would output three here, right? Because if we took two five coins and one one coin, five plus five plus one is 11, and that's the fewest number of coins. Similarly, we also could have done something like using five two coins and one one coin, but that would be six coins, so it's not better than three. Or we could have done something like using 11 one coins, but again, 11 is bigger than three, so that's not what we want. Now moving on to example two, if we're given coins of only two, so we're only given a coin that's worth two cents, let's say, and we're trying to make three cents, we can't actually do that, right? So we would return negative one. Cool. So this is actually a dynamic programming question. It's kind of like a classical one, so it's a good one to go over. Um, and typically in these problems, a good way to think about this is just smaller subproblems, right? So we're asked, what is the fewest number of coins that we need to make up some amount of amount? Let's just reduce that to what's the smallest number of coins that we need to make up, let's say, zero cents. What's the smallest number of coins that we need to make up one cent, two cents, three cents, so on and so forth. And we can just build all the way up until we get to amount. And so once we've actually solved all those smaller subproblems, we can use the smaller subproblems to build to the larger problem at hand. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to make a DP array that is going to store the fewest number of coins to make up whatever amount that we're on. So DP of zero, again, would just be the fewest number of coins that we need to make up zero cents. DP of one would be the fewest number of coins that we need to make up one cent. DP of n would be the fewest number of coins that we need to make up n cents. And so we're basically going to go through, make this DP array, populate it, and eventually we could just return DP of amount, which again will just return the fewest number of coins needed to make amount of cents. And that will solve our problem. So let's first just make our DP array, right? So we're going to say int DP equals new int, and we're going to say amount plus one, because we need amount plus one slots because this is zero based. So if we said new int D, uh, amount, that would basically give us in the end, the fewest number of coins to make up amount minus one. So we have to account for the fact that this is zero base, so we say amount plus one. Okay, now, we don't even know if we can make up any of those amounts to begin with, right? DP of anything in this array, we don't want to say zero. So Java actually initializes all of the things in an array to zero to begin with, and that would say that DP of any of those slots, right, would mean we only need zero coins, and that's not accurate. So let's initially just solve, sorry, let's initially just fill our entire DP array with something invalid. Right? And something invalid here would be something that's actually greater than our amount. If it took more coins than our amount of cents to make up that amount, that's invalid, right? So we could basically just start everything is invalid. So we could say arrays.fill, and we're going to fill our entire DP array with amount plus one. Great. So now we're actually ready to start solving all these different subproblems. So let's just start at the bottom, right? This is bottom up processing. So we're going to go from the smallest subproblem all the way up to the problem at hand. So the smallest subproblem here is zero, right? What is the fewest number of coins that we need to make zero cents? And that's an easy one, right? If there's no sense to make, we need zero coins. So we get set DP of zero equal to zero. Great, so now we're on a good track, right? So now let's actually figure out how to continue solving this, right? So again, let's just think about this in English. We wanna know the fewest number of coins eventually to make up our amount that we're given. So we need a loop for int i equals zero, while i is less than or equal to our amount, right? Because we need to go all the way up to our last problem, our last subproblem, which is the problem at hand, right? How, what's the fewest number of coins to make up amount? 
So we're going to go all the way up to amount, including it, I plus plus. And now what we want to do basically is kind of simulate taking all these different coins, right? We have X number of coins. So at every iteration, I is going to represent how many cents we're trying to make up, right? The fewest number of coins to make up I cents. And we want to basically try taking all these different coins to help figure out what is going to give us the best result. So now we want to iterate through all of our coins. So we're going to say for in J equals zero. While J is less than coins.length, J plus plus. Great. So now we're going through all the way up to amount. And for every single sense up to amount, right? So if it's five cents, if it's 15 cents, at each of those steps, we're going to go through all the coins. Great. And so now what we can check is if the coin that we're about to try and take is less than or equal to the amount which is currently i, right? Then we should try taking that coin because we can, right? If a coin was bigger than what we had left, let's say I had a nickel and I was trying to make cents per or change for maybe one cent, I can't actually take that nickel, right? It's too big. So we could just have a quick check. So if coins of j, so if the coin that we're on is less than or equal to i, which again is currently the subproblem we're solving, right? The fewest number of coins for ith cents because we're building up to amount. So if we can take the current coin, we want to set dp of i, which again is the fewest number of coins to make i cents. We want that to be as small as possible, right? So we're going to set that equal to math.min of whatever dp of i is to begin with, or currently, because it could be at a later iteration, but initially it'll just be amount plus one when we first start, right? Because we filled our entire array with amount plus one. And now we need to simulate having taken the coin coins j, right? So we're taking the current coin, so we need to account for that. So one plus, and then if we actually took that coin, what does our new amount that we're trying to make become, right? It's gonna become whatever our amount is, which is i, minus whatever the value is of coins j, right? But we don't want to just know, you know, some way to make up that amount. We want to know the best way, right? So hopefully it's a subproblem now that we've already solved, right? So we can actually just access our dp, right? So we could say dp of i minus coins j. And just again, that's going to represent, again, whatever amount that we're currently solving, i cents, right? The fewest number to make up i cents, minus whatever coin that we just took. And we want to look up the best way to make whatever amount that is up in our DP array. Great. So now when this loop terminates, believe it or not, we're actually going to have our entire DP array populated correctly. So now when we get out of this loop, all we need to do really is check how we ever modified DP of amount to something that's better than amount plus one. And if we have, we want to return it. And if we haven't, right, so if DP of amount has never become lower or smaller than amount plus one, we need to return negative one. So here we're just going to return dp of amount is greater than amount question mark. And if it is, we want to return negative one. And otherwise, we want to return dp of amount. So now let's talk about our runtime and our space complexity. So our runtime is pretty clear here, actually, right? We have a loop that's going through amount times. And then we have a loop that's going through all our coins. So that would really be n times m, where you could say n is our amount, and m is the number of coins that we're given, right? The number, however many we're given, 50 coins, 100 coins, doesn't matter. So n times m. And then our space complexity would just be n, right? However big our amount is, that's how big our space needs to be, because we need to store all those different subproblems. And now, before we submit this, actually, let's submit it, and then let's talk about a, a quick optimization. So let's submit it. <coughs> awesome, it works. And now let's just talk about something really tiny that we could do to help optimize. And it's not going to help the worst case, but it will help our average case. So initially, these coins aren't sorted, right? So we could very quickly just sort these coins. So arrays.sort coins. And then since we're going through them one by one, we know coins of zero is going to be the smallest coin. And if we ever get to a coin that's too big, we don't want to keep going through the remainder of the coins. So if this ever trips, this else statement, right? This if statement doesn't trip, our else statement will trip. And we could just break, right? Because there's no point in going through bigger and bigger coins. So this was 87%. Let's just submit it again, see if it does better. It is a little bit better. All right, guys, so that's how to solve coin change in Java. Apparently, I'm losing my voice. <coughs> Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you guys did, be sure to leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time.